Hi there. Today I'm making a candy dish. Maybe for peanuts, whatever you want to put in there. It's made from a maple burl. This was not the easiest burl I've ever turned, but uh, I enjoy doing it just like I enjoy all turning. So let's take a look at how I did this. I have a burl. I've had it so long I'm not really sure, but I believe it's maple. I'm going to just take this and see what I can make with it today. I'm cleaning up the faces of the blank with the drum sander as there's a lot of dirt on there I don't want hitting my tools. Now I'll find the approximate center of the blank, I'll mark it with a scratch awl, and then drill a 3 8 inch hole for the woodworm screw. I'm installing the woodworm screw to which I will mount the blank. I'm beginning to shape the bottom of the bowl and I will create a tenon that will be gripped in the four jaw chuck when I reverse it. This inclusion didn't look too bad when I started, but it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. The inclusion is getting real deep and I don't think I'll be able to turn it away so I'm going to try filling it with CA glue. One of the joys of turning burls is that there is no way of knowing where these inclusions go. While the other one is going to be drying, I might as well fill this one too and let them both dry at the same time. It's very possible that I'll just turn this away, but we'll see what happens.
cleaning up a small flaw I did not see until sanding. More sanding. And another hidden flaw. Ah oh, yes, sanding. Everyone's favorite. Good thing we can watch it faster than we can do it. Since I know how much fun it is to watch sanding, let's just say I sand it up to 800 and let it go at that, and we'll carry on. Now with the blank reversed, it's time to start turning the inside of the bowl. I prefer to leave the tailstock in position for support as long as possible. I'm using a homemade depth gauge at guesstimating where I want the inside bottom of the bowl to be. Another inclusion has shown up and this one is really large and deep. As well to the right of that there are some small openings in the grain that need to be filled with CA glue. See if I can fix that up. I've switched to a scraper here to give that a try.
it's extremely porous in here. Very hard to cut or scrape, get it clean. The wood is a little punky, a little soft. I'm going to give it a wash with some CA glue and just see if I can get that to harden the fibers up. Maybe I can cut them or scrape them a little better. Another problem this porous wood is giving me is that using this CA glue, it's going right through the wood and coming out on the outside that I've already sanded. Now I'm going to have to sand it again, or maybe some of the super solvent uh, CA glue remover will take that off. I'll have to try that. I'm not sure how well this is going to show up on camera, but right in here there are some streaks of cyanoacrylate glue that have come through and I'm going to see if this super solvent for cyanoacrylate instant glues will take that off. I haven't tried it before in this situation. I'm just going to give it a shot. Not knowing how caustic it is, I'm wearing rubber gloves. I don't like to take a lot of chances on having less skin later than I do now. Let's just see what this will do. I'm also a little concerned with what this solvent is going to do to the wood, whether I'll be able to oil it or have to re-sand it again. By golly, it looks like it's working. I'd be very happy if this would work without having to sand again. Near as I can tell, it's taken it all off. There's a little more here that I haven't done yet, and a few other spots around the outside. I'll see what I can do about those. Well, it seems to have worked just fine. I've got all the glue off of there. It doesn't look like I'm gonna to have to sand anymore, but I guess we'll see as time goes by. Now it's time to go back and see what I can do on the interior. Twenty-two minutes of sanding in twenty-two seconds. Oh, if we could only really do that. Considering how much trouble this burl gave me, I'm quite pleased with the results. There are still some little divots in here. But I'm not going to try to fill them to give them a little character. I kind of like the way it is right now. So now I'm going to reverse it on my coal jaws and turn that bottom down. Sign it and date it and it'll be finished. It's mounted now on my coal jaws and ready to be turned. I want to hollow out a little bit in the middle of the tenon. The tenon sits just proud of the bottom of the rest of the bowl. I want to leave it like that so that it'll look as though it's floating just a little bit. I kind of like that look to myself anyway. And then I will put my logo in the middle, sign and date it. Then when I oil it, it's going to be complete. So let's see how this works out. I'm drilling a shallow recess to hold my logo coin. I'm 
I'm going to put just a drop of thick CA glue on here. It doesn't take much. If I put too much on, it's just going to squeeze out all over the place. I'll use this stick to push it in there and use the tailstock to give force to hold it there. Just for a couple of minutes to let it cure. I forgot to inscribe a couple of lines with my skew chisel. The purpose of those is for decoration and also to give me a place between which to date and sign this. I'll put those on now. And those look good. I don't even think I'm going to bother sanding those. Now I'm just going to put the information I want to wood burn in here with my pencil. And then I'll use the wood burning tool to go over this. And that should take care of that. The only thing left to do now is to oil the wood. I'm using olive oil. Olive oil will darken a little bit. I find this a little bit light, a little bit bland. This will help pop it and give some character to the wood. So I'm just going to put some on, rub it in a little bit, let it sit for a while. I'll rub the excess off. I will post some pictures at the end of this to show what it looks like completed. Yeah, it's darkening up, making it look very nice. I like this. Well, this was not the easiest burl I've ever turned, but it turns out pretty nice. This will be real nice when it's filled with peanuts or candy or something. I've got a little bit of an undercut here so that when you grab a handful of candies, they'll pop into your hand. And that's it. So if you enjoyed this, please click the like button. Let me know you're enjoying what I'm doing. Remember to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Spend it in your shop. Thanks for watching.